Today, I am announcing my candidacy for the 2024 Republican nomination to represent Colorado's fourth congressional district in the United States House of Representatives. It's the right move for me personally, and it's the right decision for those who support our conservative movement. Is it clear what she's doing there? She's running for re-election as we expected, but not where we might expect because that's not her district at all. It's a totally different district, but one that Lauren Boebert clearly thinks that she has a better chance of winning in. So she is fleeing her district. And I love her her explanation. First of all, she tried to do like the faux gravitas or whatever. She said it's the right decision for me. Well, yeah, I have no doubt that you have a better shot and you are focusing on yourself. So I'm glad that you put that first in your list of priorities. And then she also said it's the right people for like those who are supporting our movement. No mention of the constituents, not even the people of Colorado. It's her and then people who support our movement around the country. Like they don't even have to pretend that they give a damn about their actual district or the people who live in it. That's not where they raise their money. It's not who they spend their time with. And even when they flee, they like inside of their own state carpet bag to a different place. They don't even have to pretend that that's who they care about. Well, um, she's getting a lot of criticism. So I'm sure she will focus more on that. But get, let's give her a little bit more time to talk about why she is leaving her district for uh, greener pastures. I promised I would do whatever it takes to stop the socialists and communists from taking over our country. That means staying in the fight, but it also means not allowing Hollywood elites and progressive money groups to buy the third district, a seat that they have no business owning. I will not allow dark money that is directed at destroying me personally to steal this seat. It's not fair to the third district and the conservatives there who have fought so hard for our victories, of which I'm incredibly grateful. Yeah, keep that forced smile on your face and pretend that you're not terrified of losing your reelection bid. That's why she left. She was super close last time around and she believed that Adam Frisch was gonna beat her in a reelection. That's all that this is. The thing about I'm not gonna let dark money buy the election, she raises money from all over the country. like. Utterly ridiculous. What? So now that you're going to this other one, the dark money isn't gonna flood into that district. Again, it's all it's all BS. Like her talking about is that this is a big sacrifice. I said I'd take out the communists and the socialists, and now I'm gonna do it over there where I might be able to win re-election. This is all personal. It's ridiculous that you can do this. She doesn't live there. That's not her district. She doesn't know anything about it. And it's entirely possible, by the way, considering that there's already a packed Republican primary there. Ken Buck, who previously held the seat, is not going to be running for election. So a bunch of Republicans are flooding in. This should turn off a lot of Republicans in that area. It might well do that. So we'll see if this works for her. It is a much safer seat, though. So her previous district was R plus seven. Remember, she massively underperformed what you would expect from that area for Republican. Uh, the district she's moving into is about twice as Republican, R plus 13. So she has a better shot, but she has to make her way through the Republican primary first. Ida, what do you think about this? You know, it's a scary place that the more despicable these people behave, the more traction they gain. Um, this is the woman that got kicked out of a movie theater for being inappropriate and uh, right in a physical altercation. Yes. Like with Beetlejuice. Her, with, <laughs> with, with her. Is it boyfriend? Is that what it was? Because she's getting yes. a divorce because she, you know, whatever. You know, this is the pe people who are always talking about values and the people who are always talking about moral conduct and the people who are always talking about uh, pointing out other people's behaviors that commit some of the most ridiculous, despicable behaviors that feel the audacity that they should be in charge of uh, people's money and participating in lawmaking and maintaining order in the country, in the country, which I feel is just so hypocritical and so ridiculous. But also the fact that People don't respect our government anymore, our process and, and the rules. And, you know, there are people of color that go to jail for sending their kids to a different district. Mm -hmm. There are mothers in jail who have gone to jail because they went, they wanted their kids to go to a better school. But here, this woman can just switch the district that she wants to run to, wants to run in where she doesn't live, and everybody's all right with this. And I just think that this is. It's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. There are so many women who have worked so hard that I guarantee you they are they're in droves that could do 
a much better job in government. And these are the people that get elected. And it is so sad that they are the representation of women when women have to fight so hard for everything that we get and still be underpaid. And this is what they choose to elevate, you know, these ridiculous women who are doing and and, and listen, the men know better because I'm I'm all here for power to the woman. But I just feel that this woman has been so harmful. The woman who wanted to take arms into Congress, the woman who has a physical altercation and has to get kicked out of an establishment is the one you want to elect into office and tell your children these are the heroes and these are the people to look up to. Hundred percent. I don't. I don't know what to say. Yeah, like there's there's hundreds of thousands of people living in the area. There's nobody who's better qualified to serve. Just you. You've heard her name, so I guess she gets to take it. Just like there's no respect for the process. There's no. There's no expectation. There's no standards for the people that will will elect. She's had a couple of years now. To prove that she deserves a spot in Congress, she hasn't delivered. And by the way, she's already promising her new area that she's not going. What is she talking about? I'm going to defeat the socialists and the communists. Oh, vague nonsense, conspiratorial nonsense that has nothing to do with. You could say that about literally any district. She's not making any promises that she's going to deliver for them, and she couldn't because she doesn't know anything about the district. It's just <laughs> it is so disrespectful to the people. And so I don't even expect that a Democrat's going to win that race. So yeah. they're going to get some moron Republican, but shouldn't the Republicans there expect the best moron? Like just to get someone who's fleeing purely for their own political benefit. So these seats are supposed to be worth something, and she clearly doesn't think that they are, except to her. Now, with that said, we do need to move on. Or do you have a quick comment? I just want to say it's always the trigger words dark money, Congress, uh, communists, socialists. It's always the trigger words for the people who get upset when they see this because they don't have the benefit of the education that allows them to understand what communism means, what socialism really means, how we have a mixed economy, how we dabble in socialism when it benefits us, how we turn our faces against it when it's something that's going to crack the bank for these rich politicians who don't want to stop sending their kids to better schools than the rest of the people in the country. It is so amazing to me. It's always using the words that make people, oh, oh no, that's where I draw the line. And they don't even know what's really happening. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, And just... (laughs) There's just, there's no personal accountability. She says in her statement or whatever, this has been like a personally difficult year for me. Like the the issue isn't what you did in the theater. It isn't, it's that it is utterly inconsistent with the lofty moral position that you like to place yourself in from which you can persecute and suppress other people. And you have shown no evolution whatsoever on that. Maybe you'll be a little bit more careful about who you grope in public places, but you have not changed on your desire to attack other people for what they literally do behind closed doors. That's the issue. Anyway, we'll see what happens with her and if she does end up getting beaten, what she turns to. I'm assuming, I'm assuming podcast, maybe following George Santos with cameos or something. We'll perhaps find out together. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.